keep it simple. We don't need to guess what our dream customers want. People who are following us on social or on our newsletter list, they're already kind of sort of interested in what it is that you do. So they're going to be primed to give you a response that's going to help you help them. Welcome to the Jasmine Star Show, where today we are going to keep it quick and very action driven so that we get results and growth in your business. Today, we're going to be talking about lead generation. Yes. How do you get people interested in your business? Ideally, they would see something online or have a friend tell them, and then they would go whip out their credit card and make a purchase. But we know that most things in life don't work that way. And if we thought about it, we don't even function that way, right? How many ads do you need to see? How many endorsements do you need to get? Well, the more expensive your offer is, the more you need to see, the more you need to be convinced and with more frequency. So how do you first get somebody interested in what it is you offer? Well, you create trust. And what is the best way to create trust? By teaching them more about something they find really valuable. So we're going to start off with a few key concepts to begin. And I want to make sure that you can watch and listen because I'm going to be sharing a lot of visuals and examples along the way. So you want to make sure that if you're not watching on YouTube, be sure snag on over there. Or I'm also going to be sharing a downloadable link for you to get these resources and visuals. But before we get in, I want to discuss around what a lead magnet is. It's also called an opt-in or a freebie, I'm gonna be using these words interchangeably, but it's something of value, like a PDF, a quiz, a video lesson, an audio recording, classes, that you give away for free in exchange for your ideal client email address. What are we trying to do? We're trying to go deeper and get connected with people who are gonna be primed to buy what it is you offer. Now, oftentimes people might be saying, yeah, but who checks their email? Well, when you have somebody's email address, you have at the bare minimum a way to get into their inbox and when you send it, it gets delivered. Now, whether or not they open it, 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 that's not really the focus here. The focus is to have another point of contact with somebody who's interested. Because if somebody follows you on social media, well, there is a very high likelihood that they're going to see your post consistently. And what do you want people to do with your post? See them consistently. So if they're not actually doing or seeing that on social media, email is another great opportunity for you to share your message and showcase value. So how do you get somebody's email address. Well, you give them something of value, aka the freebie, lead magnet, or opt-in. Okay, so opt-ins help get more people on your email list, and this is what you use to build trust. I recommend, if at all possible, to send at least one newsletter a week. If you go to jasminestar.com forward slash subscribe, you will get on my weekly newsletter. Now, these weekly newsletters, by and large, aren't selling anything. What am I doing? I'm sharing personal learnings. I'm sharing personal stories. I'm talking about the nature of business. I'm sharing tips and tricks. And so when people get a weekly newsletter, they have the ability to connect with me in a real way without being sold to. Okay. Great, so what am I doing? I'm nurturing this conversation. I'm building the know, like, and trust factor with people who sign up on that newsletter list, and that's exactly what I want you to do as well. Now, um, let's talk about a best practice. But before we do that, what I said was, go to jasminestar.com forward slash subscribe and get my newsletter list. But did I really give you anything of value? No, I didn't. So while that used to work back in the day, like sign up for my newsletter list and people are like, yes, I love that. Very few people now are like, you want to know what I need? I need another email in my inbox, right? So just in case I, I, I didn't, I didn't get you on my newsletter list with my very hard pitch at jasminestar.com forward slash subscribe. What I'm going to do now is make a couple offers along the way that might pique your interest so that you can do the same thing with people who are primed to become future customers, clients, or just go deeper with the business. So what we like to do is we like to have several best practices and our recommendation is to create a new lead magnet or opt-in every quarter. And we do this because we like to test. We like to see what's relevant. We like to offer different um, topics and ways to connect multiple times a year. Now, they do take a little bit of time to create, which is why our team is like, you know, we really do like the cadence of one a quarter. So let's function on this assumption that you are going to create four lead magnets in one year. Now, now, the goal for today's Shorty podcast is to identify what opt-in will attract your ideal client, and I want to chat about how you can market them effectively. So on that note, let's dive in. Let's start with a five-step framework to creating a new opt-in, starting with, oh, before we get there, 
I told you that I was gonna give you something of value, right? Are we getting super meta on the podcast? Yes, we are. If you go to jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet, I'm gonna send you a workbook. I'm gonna send you 10 freebie ideas for you to use in your business. And I'm also gonna be sharing video examples, walkthroughs of them as well. So we should get that party started. jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet. You can find the link in the show notes. Is anybody really noticing what I'm doing here? What do I want? I want to give you something of value so we can go deeper. Let's go. Okay, so let's get into the five-step framework. Step number one is to begin with the end in mind. So what do I mean by this? I want you to answer two questions. Number one, what is my offer? And number two, who is my ideal client for this offer? What is my offer and who is my ideal client for this offer? That is step one. Do not pass go. Do not go to step number two until you're very clear on step number one. Now let's break this down into an example. Every time that we are looking at creating a lead magnet, we go through who is our ideal client. So let's use an example. Recently, I was list building. I wanted to get a, a group of qualified leads for a seven-figure mastermind that I was hosting. Now, no, it's not a pitch. The mastermind is closed and it's filled with the most incredible people. But in order to make sure that I was relevant, that I build that no like, and trust factor, we built a lead magnet. And so I thought to myself, well, what better way if I actually want to have a mastermind and get to know people and work alongside their businesses would be the best way to showcase my expertise, showcase the value that I can drive and showcase their ability to kind of know, like, and trust me. So what the team and I decided to do is number one, identify our offer. And that was a mastermind. Step number two, the ideal client for this mastermind. Well, it was a seven figure entrepreneur. Great. Step one is done. Now let's get into a different example. Let's just say that you are the owner of a longevity company. Great, what is your offer? Well, doctor prescribed longevity supplements and medicine. Cool, who is your ideal client? Men over 50 who want to lose 10 to 20 pounds, sleep better and develop muscle to improve their golf swing. Great, I have walked you through a personal example. I have walked you through a theoretical example. What I'm trying to do is create the pattern in your mind. Now let's get into step number two, to look at your offer and consider what your ideal client needs to know before investing. So I want you to answer this question. If my ideal client saw my offer right now, what would they need to have known or already accomplished to be primed to invest? So let's break this down with a personal example. My ideal client was a seven-figure entrepreneur. What did they need to know before being primed for a mastermind? So I thought to myself, well, they're probably going to have to have some sort of systems and processes in place, some sort of time management and goal setting practices built in, and the ability to have time to build out the vision. That's what I'm thinking, that they need to know that to be primed to invest in my offer. Now let's Continue our example with our theoretical offer. Remember, we have a doctor prescribed longevity medication and supplement company. Okay, that's the offer. What does the ideal client need to know for that offer? Remember, men in their 50s who want to build muscle, improve their golf swing. Well, what do they need to know? The importance of sleep, how extra weight affects health in your 50s, and how to avoid muscle aches. These are things that in order for them to be primed to buy the offer, they should know or it would be helpful to know in getting them ready to be purchasers of that offer. Now let's get into step number three. Create a list of opt-ins you could create that meet the needs of your ideal client as it relates to your offer. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, I'm gonna suggest to set a timer and brain dump for 10 minutes. What my team and I, we sat down with the content team and we said, okay, we're just gonna brain dump ideas. But in preparation of this meeting, we all got an Asana task and we said, come up with five or 10 ideas of opt-ins that could be used to prime a seven-figure entrepreneur to sign up for the mastermind. So that when we went to the meeting, we were able to open up Notion and we saw all of our ideas next to each other. And then we just said, we started prioritizing them. So we brain dumped, then we brought it together and that is how we came up with an idea. So uh, if you're kind of stuck or maybe you don't have a team, well, you can always ask chat GPT. And I'm gonna give you a sample prompt right about now. I am blank, describe what you are. I sell, then deeply describe the offer. My ideal client is, describe your ideal client. I wanna create a short lead magnet they would find valuable. Please give me 10 ideas, a brief outline, and a catchy title for each. Great, now you have just ideated ideas for what you can build. 
Now, I want to say something very important. Your opt-in must be related to your offer, not just something that your ideal client has interest in. Okay, so case in point, I'm trying to attract seven-figure entrepreneurs. Well, I can make uh, references to the NFL starting. I can make references to Taylor Swift. I can make references and create content around celebrities or pop culture, things that I would find very interesting. But if it actually isn't in alignment to the thing that I'm offering, well, then that's a moot point. What we want to do is to make sure that this freebie, this lead magnet is actually priming them and getting them ready for the offer. Now let's get to step number four. I want you to test two or three of your ideas with your newsletter list or social media. Remember how I said like to brainstorm a list of ideas? Well, the content and team and I got together and we were debating around three topics. And I said, hey, let's be agnostic about it. Let's use data to actually guide the way. So that day I just started testing on social media. Do you like this title or this title? What would you be more interested, this or this? I did this test for a series of three days and we had a very clear winner on the front end of that. So what am I gonna suggest? I'm going to suggest to keep it simple. I want you to have poll options that really explain the value is that you want to provide. Now, the reason we do this is because we don't need to guess what our dream customers want. People who are following us on social or on our newsletter list, they're already kind of sort of interested in what it is that you do. So they're going to be primed to give you a response that's going to help you help them. So when we put out our poll example, the, the, the title, the topic that rose to the top was a seven figure accelerator growth plan, your clear plan to scaling to eight figures. Okay. That's what people wanted to know the most about. And I was like, great, we have the title, we know the value prop. Now let's extend this example. Let's go back to that longevity company. There's a doctor selling medicine supplements to men in their 50s who want to have bigger muscles, sleep better, and have a better golf swing. If I was that doctor, I might test two titles. Number one, five quick practices to improve your sleep in your 50s. Number two, best muscles to build to improve your golf swing. What am I doing? I am creating content to prep somebody for the thing I ultimately want to sell them by providing value. Step number five is once you create the opt-in, test title ideas on social media. And again, we want to keep this very simple. And here again, we use polls to help guide us to the right thing. Less guessing, more data. So let's get into an example for that doctor who is getting people nutrition and supplements. Poll, help me choose a title. I'll be sharing this with you for free soon. So what we're doing is we want to incentivize people to click on the polls to guide us and letting them know like we're creating something for you and it's on its way. So if you would like to see a workbook to see how we've actually built out with examples, you get 10 freebie ideas, you get video examples, you can go to jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet. Okay, so I wanna walk you through recently how we use this five-step framework to help us build an opt-in where we felt it was really drilled down to prime for an offer. So I decided that I was gonna create an audio series. Now this is different than the lead magnet that I had created, let's say, for this podcast. What am I doing in that podcast? Well, I'm creating a video, I'm having a workbook, I'm having a PDF, that's the nature, that's the visuals, that's the collateral that that lead magnet t had taken. But I thought to myself, well, I wanna create a lead magnet that is really focused on where I think a seven-figure entrepreneur spends most of their time. And the person who I want to cultivate relationships with, well, they really like podcasts. So the team and I ha had said, okay, we're gonna be testing these ideas. And so I said, I wanna try something new. I've never done an audio series before, but I wanted an exclusive audio series. That's what we decided on. Great, awesome. And the title that we had come to based on what people were most interested in was Overcoming Poster Syndrome as a Seven-Figure Entrepreneur. And I'm going to link that in the show notes. You can go to jasminestar.com forward slash imposter. Okay. Do y'all see what I'm doing here? I'm leveraging my past lead magnets to have a conversation around what is going to serve you better. So... Let's break this down. In the beginning, I said jasminestar.com forward slash subscribe. If you were like a ride or die and like, I am about Jasmine, I really want to hear from her, you, you might go there. Chances are you probably didn't. If you wanted to go deeper in this podcast to learn how to make lead magnets and start driving hot leads, you would go to jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet. And what am I doing right about now? I am sending you to jasminestar.com forward slash imposter. Now, here's the thing. 
I create these resources over time and point people to them. Why? I want to go deeper, but I also want to attract people who see the world the way that I do, who have desires, who work the way that I do. Why? Because like attracts like, and you'll be more likely to build trust over time. So once you have an opt-in created, I want you to use a few strategies to market it. Method number one is to share on social media. You can link it in your stories. You could have it in a link in bio. For instance, if I do an Instagram live and someone is dealing with maybe um, worried about what people will say or think, uh, in the Instagram live, I will say, go to jasminestar.com forward slash imposter. If somebody has a branding question, they're wanting to build their personal brand, go to jasminestar.com forward slash branding. Like, so I'm creating these ways for people, driving them to the newsletter so that they're not just connecting on social media, but can actually go even deeper on the newsletter. Method number two is I will share the freebie on my podcast. Ta-da, that's what I'm doing right now. Anytime that I have the ability to connect with people, that is where I'm gonna be talking about my lead magnet. And method number three, if you have the ability to create simple ads on YouTube, using Meta, or even TikTok, you can use ads to give value that ends up growing your list. So let's dive in and review the five steps to creating this amazing lead magnet framework. Step number one, begin with the end in mind. Step number two, look at your offer and consider what your ideal client needs to know before investing. Step number three, create a list of what opt-ins you could create that meets the needs of your ideal client as it relates to your offer. That's the key point. Step number four is to test two or three ideas with your newsletter or social media and also be testing those ideas for titles on social media as well. And the last and final step is once you create that amazing lead magnet that is going to nurture warm and wonderful leads, you are going to market it on social media or if you have your podcast or even run ads to it. So if you would like to see examples of our exact process through the step-by-step, -step, again, jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet, I will be linking it in the show notes. I also want to end by saying this. This is a test. Every lead magnet is a test you actually don't know how well it's going to be received online. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs that I've worked with and they're just like, I have created three, three lead magnets and nobody's opting in. Great. Talk to me after 300. And I get it. They take time to create. And I get it. You're pouring your heart and soul. And when people don't sign up for it, you think it's me. It must be me. I'm not creating a value. No, no, no. Everything is a test. We have had opt-ins that have completely flopped. Like even when we ran ads to them, nobody would opt in. We're like, okay, great. We have a big data point. We're not going to talk about that again. We have had opt-ins that we literally are like, oh, well, we think so. All right, let's just get it out. Let's, let's hit our metric. Let's just try. Let's throw mud on the wall. And that thing freaking killed. And we look back and we're like, this? This is the thing that like grew our list like hotcakes? So you just don't know until you know. But guess what? You learn from it all. You learn from the highs and you learn from the lows and every step along the way, you are made better. But that is a choice. You can look at something difficult and say you were made worse or you can look at something difficult and say, I am stronger and better now because of it. The choice that we have is entirely our own. The lens at which we look at these opportunities to create and cultivate conversations with future leads is a power that we all possess, but it does require a bit of courage and a little bit of chutzpah and a heck of a lot of strategy, which is why this is an honor and privilege to create this free resource for you because I want you to build your business. Let's go. jasminestar.com forward slash lead magnet. Thank you a thousand times over for watching and listening to The Jasmine Star Show.